Hi, this is Mark from Skywagon University. This is going to be a quick video looking at the model year changes of the Cessna 210. There's two of them here. There's a 67 and a 65. Very different planes. We'll go over the details of each one and how different they are to the ones after them and before them and each other. So this is a 64 210E. And if you look at it from a glance, it looks like a 206. Spring steel gear, longer flaps, big Fry's ailerons, the flat skin horizontal stabilizer, three side windows, that's a 206. But it isn't, it's a 210. And these years are unique. The 64, 65, and 66s are 206s with retractable gear. So let's go a little bit nearer and have a look at some of the detail of it. So, details. 64, 65, 66 are 206s with retractable gear. So just going back the earlier years, the 6061s with a narrow tapered fuselage with the, with the very complicated landing gear and smaller and with four seats. Then the 62 and 3 were the 205, actually the other way around, the 210 fixed gear became the 205 briefly for those two years. But they had a 182 tail, a 182 wings and flaps and ailerons, and an IO 470 260 horse engine in it. Then 64, 65, and 66 were these. They have a 520 in them, a 285 horsepower Continental with a 1700 hour TBO if it's non turbo, and a 1400 hour TBO if it's turbo. Now, 206-ness, the, the attraction of it is that the 182 flaps and ailerons segregate here, like a 205 or an early 210. The 206 and these 210s, the flap ends here. It's like three more feet. And then the aileron is enormous. It's a Fry's aileron. It's hinged in the middle. It's 18 inches rather than just six inches. So far more effective aileron, far more effective flaps, just like a 206. Same engine as a 206. That looks fixed gear because it's a flat spring steel gear leg. But that totally retracts into here. There's the gear door. There's a channel in the belly and it completely retracts. So it's full RG on it. The nose chin on a 206 isn't used. It's an empty cavern where the wheel would recess into if it were retractable. This has got the nose wheel chin because it is a retractable. 206s, other than the P's, the P's have two front doors, passenger. All the 210s have two front doors. And they have this little baggage door. And here are the fifth and sixth seats. This is the first year they had. The 205s didn't. Well, the 205s were similar to this. The 61, 62s, 60, 61s didn't. And the 205s retractables, 210s, did. So it's just like a flat area. The reason it's so tall here, right back to here, is because the wheel well is under here. So the wheel is inside here, so that can't go any lower. So kids could climb in there and use those fifth and sixth seats. So the tail, if you come around and look at this skin, it's flat. It's not Cessna's corrugated um, elevator from a 182. So flat skins, it's still only 10 and a half feet wide. They widen them out in 68 to 13 feet, but it's got a flat skin, same vertical fin, same rudder, 84 gallons of gas, long range fuel. And this plane with a 520 in it probably burns, you know, 23 on takeoff for five minutes and then uh, in cruise at 10,000 feet with everything set perfectly it'll burn 12 gallons an hour doing 155 knots carrying about 1300 pounds so all the benefits of a 206 but with cross-country speed as well so 60 remember 64 65 66 are these and 67 big change and we've got one right here so here's a 67 the first year of the cantilever wing, no strut. So the strut would obviously be here. This is the one with the AD on the spar. We did an AD on the spar video about it. So the wing is literally bolted to the side of the fuselage on a giant cross member carry through spar. So there is no strut. So this is a much different design wing. It's still got the big Fry's ailerons and the long flaps, but it's got um, a straight cord wing. So it's laminar flow. It's not a lift wing like on the 206 slash earlier 210s. So this is built for speed. Um, still got the chin, obviously, because it's retractable. It's still got the 285 horse, 1700 hour, turbo, 1700 hour TBO'd engine, non-turbo, this is a non-turbo. And if it was turbo, it'd be 1400, 285 horsepower, 520. 
retractable, similar, gear doors, same baggage door. So really it's a very similar fuselage with um, the strutless wings on them. There's the same configuration of seats, six, two for kids, four for grown-ups. This is a bit more of a different design than on the 66. So there's a, a lot of different uh, features to it. It became the Centurion. This is the Centurion logo. Same tail, but wider. I mean, this is like, I can barely reach it. This is the wide tail, flat skinned. Sometimes you have to pay attention on them if they've been in a corrosive environment for the trim tab on the right side. This can be full of foam on a 206 with a flat skinned elevator. If it's full of foam, see that one's empty, that's been changed. If it was full of foam, water would sit in it and corrode the bottom out. So you've got to look at that on the uh, trim tab on them. Now you can see it from here, but we'll go to the front as well. The 67s have excessive dihedral on their wings. I mean, the wings are literally like two or th two degrees higher than on the later model. So if we come over here, you can see it even more. You get a good view of the whole plane. So only 67s have that dihedral. 68s, they lowered it and then they stayed there, similar to every other Cessna, um, from then until the end of production in 86. 86s, 87s, sorry, 85s and 86s have 40 foot wingspans and 4,000 pound gross weight. Those planes are 300, 400 plus grand. There's not many of them around. But that is the first year of the Strutless 210. And subsequently to it, the year model changes will be where the side window becomes one and the baggage door is removed to almost where the N is on the end number. So these are actually very good value for money, fast cross country retractables. So inside, a quick look at them. This is the 67. The word that always comes to mind is big. They're big inside, they're wide. They have you know, a lot of room in the back. You can see there's an arm rest here that's been added that's between the seats, but there's normally a gap, so you're not rubbing elbows. Big wide panel, comfortable two doors, six seats. This one's got a Garmin 750 in it and it's uh, pretty well equipped. Carry through spa, because there's no struts. That's what the AD is on and you'll see that in that other video I did. Um, so you always have to check those, but it's right there where the pilot's sitting. But big, big open space, open cabins. I'll quickly look at the uh, 1964. And here is the interior of the 64 210E. Um, very much like a 206, not so much 210-like. Very comfortable if you're used to a 182 or any other of the sort of traditional Cessnas with struts. It feels and looks more like a sort of a 182, 206 type of plane, yet it's capable of the six blaze cross country. Center stacked, very conventional layout. I've got this seat forward just so that you can see more in it because it'll kind of obscure the view. But yeah, bigger. They're just good load hauling cross country planes. So just a quick overview of these like mid 60s 210s, just a quick video, it wasn't very long, we didn't fly the planes, but I had a 67 and I had a 64 here, and there's a lot of differences in that transition period. And since, since once you get 68 and newer, they go to the end of production with very little changes. So yeah, 64, 67 210s, um, Mark from Skywagon University signing off on another video. Click on the subscribe button here and the little bell if you want to get other videos like this. We'll be doing a lot of them in the future. Thanks for watching.